Chapter Three, Part Seven of Lady Byron Vindicated: A History of the Byron Controversy by Harriet Beecher Stowe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part Seven of these miscellaneous documents: Three Domestic Poems by Lord Byron. Fare thee well. A sketch and lines on hearing that Lady Byron was ill. Fare thee well. Fare thee well, and if forever, still forever, fare thee well. Even though unforgiving, ne'er against thee shall my heart rebel. Would that breast were bared before thee, where thy head so oft hath lain, while that placid sleep came o'er thee, which thou ne'er canst know again. Would that breast by thee glanced over, every inmost thought could show, then thou wouldst at last discover twas not well to spurn it so though the world for this commend thee though it smile upon the blow even its praises must offend thee found it on another's woe though my many faults defaced me could no other arm be found than the one which once embraced me to inflict a cureless wound yet oh yet thyself deceive not love may sink by slow decay but by sudden wrench believe not hearts can thus be torn away still thine own its life retaineth still must mine though bleeding beat and the undying thought which paineth is that we no more may meet these are words of deeper sorrow than the wail above the dead both shall live but every morrow wake us from a widowed bed and when thou wouldst solace gather when our child's first accents flow wilt thou teach her to say father though his care she must forgo when her little hand shall press thee when her lip to thine is pressed think of him whose prayer shall bless thee think of him thy love had blessed should her lineaments resemble those thou never more mayst see then thy heart will softly tremble with a pulse yet true to me all my faults perchance thou knowest all my madness none can know all my hopes where'er thou goest whither yet with thee they go every feeling hath been shaken pride which not a world could bow bows to thee by thee forsaken even my soul forsakes me now but tis done all words are idle words from me are vainer still but the thoughts we cannot bridle force their way without the will fare thee well thus disunited torn from every nearer tie seared in heart and lone and blighted more than this i scarce can die a sketch born in the garret in the kitchen bread promoted thence to deck her mistress head next for some gracious service unexpressed and from its wages only to be guessed raised from the toilet to the table where her wondering betters wait behind her chair with eye unmoved and forehead unabashed she dines from off the plate she lately washed quick with the tale and ready with the lie the genial confidant and general spy who could ye gods her next employment guess and only infants earliest governess she taught the child to read and taught so well that she herself by teaching learned to spell an adept next in penmanship she grows as many a nameless slander deftly shows what she had made the pupil of her art none know but that high soul secured the heart and panted for the truth it could not hear with longing breast and undiluted ear foiled was perversion by that youthful mind which flattery fooled not baseness could not blind deceit infect not near contagion soil indulgence weaken nor example spoil nor mastered science tempt her to look down on humbler talents with a pitying frown nor genius swell nor beauty render vain 
nor envy ruffle to retaliate pain nor fortune change pride raise nor passion bow nor virtue teach austerity till now serenely purest of her sex that live but wanting one sweet weakness to forgive too shocked at faults her soul can never know she deems that all could be like her below foe to all vice yet hardly virtue's friend for virtue pardons those she would amend but to the theme now laid aside too long the baleful burthen of this honest song though all her former functions are no more she rules the circle which she served before if mothers none know why before her quake if daughters dread her for the mother's sake if early habits those false links which bind at times the loftiest to the meanest mind have given her power too deeply to instill the angry essence of her deadly will if like a snake she steal within your walls till the black slime betrays her as she crawls if like a viper to the heart she wind and leave the venom there she did not find what marvel that this hag of hatred works eternal evil latent as she lurks to make a pandemonium where she dwells and reign the hecate of domestic hells skilled by a touch to deepen scandal's tints with all the kind mendacity of hints while mingling truth with falsehood sneers with smiles a thread of candor with a web of wiles a plain blunt show of briefly spoken seeming to hide her bloodless heart's soul hardened scheming a lip of lies a face formed to conceal and without feeling mock at all who feel with a vile mask the gorgon would disown a cheek of parchment and an eye of stone mark how the channels of her yellow blood ooze to her skin and stagnate there to mud cased like the centipede in saffron mail or darker greenness of the scorpion scale for drawn from reptiles only may we trace congenial colours in that soul or face look on her features and behold her mind as in a mirror of itself defined look on the picture deem it not o'ercharged there is no trait which might not be enlarged yet true to nature's journeymen who made this monster when their mistress left off trade this female dog-star of her little sky where all beneath her influence droop or die o oh, wretch without a tear without a thought save joy above the ruin thou hast wrought the time shall come nor long remote when thou shalt feel far more than thou inflictest now feel for thy vile self-loving self in vain and turn thee howling in unpitied pain may the strong curse of crushed affections light back on thy bosom with reflected blight and make thee in thy leprosy of mind as loathsome to thyself as to mankind till all thy self-thoughts curdle into hate black as thy will for others would create till thy hard heart be calcined into dust and thy soul welter in its hideous crust oh may thy grave be sleepless as the bed the widowed couch of fire that thou hast spread then when thou fain wouldst weary heaven with prayer look on thine earthly victims and despair down to the dust and as thou rottest away even worms shall perish on thy poisonous clay but for the love i bore and still must bear to her thy malice from all ties would tear thy name thy human name to every eye the climax of all scorn should hang on high exalted o'er thy less abhorred compeers and festering in the infamy of years <sighs> lines on hearing that lady byron was ill and thou wert sad yet i was not with thee and thou wert sick and yet i was not near 
methought that joy and health alone could be where i was not and pain and sorrow here and is it thus it is as i foretold and shall be more so for the mind recoils upon itself and the wrecked heart lies cold while heaviness collects the shattered spoils it is not in the storm nor in the strife we feel benumbed and wish to be no more but in the after silence on the shore when all is lost except a little life i am too well avenged but twas my right whate'er my sins might be thou wert not sent to be the nemesis who should requite nor did heaven choose so near an instrument mercy is for the merciful if thou hadst been of such twill be accorded now thy nights are banished from the realms of sleep yes they may flatter thee but thou shalt feel a hollow agony which will not heal for thou art pillowed on a curse too deep thou hast sown in my sorrow and must reap the bitter harvest in a woe as real i have had many foes but none like thee for against the rest myself i could defend and be avenged or turn them into friend but thou in safe implacability hast not to dread in thy own weakness shielded and in my love which hath but too much yielded and spared for thy sake some i should not spare and thus upon the world trust in thy truth and the wild fame of my ungoverned youth on things that were not and on things that are even upon such a basis hast thou built a monument whose cement hath been guilt the moral clytemnestra of thy lord and hewed down with an unsuspected sword fame peace and hope and all the better life which but for this cold treason of thy heart might still have risen from out the grave of strife and found a nobler duty than to part but of thy virtues didst thou make a vice trafficking with them in a purpose cold for present anger and for future gold and buying others grief at any price and thus once entered into crooked ways the early truth which was thy proper praise did not still walk beside thee but at times and with a breast unknowing its own crimes deceit averments incompatible equivocations and the thoughts which dwell in janus spirits the significant eye which learns to lie with silence the pretext of prudence with advantages annexed the acquiescence in all things which tend no matter how to the desired end all found a place in thy philosophy the means were worthy and the end is won i would not do by thee as thou hast done this ends chapter three part seven domestic poems by lord byron and this ends lady byron vindicated a history of the byron controversy by harriet beecher stowe read for you by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana thanks very much for listening and i do hope you've enjoyed it